Listening without an agenda is hard. I know it's hard. And it's also one of the ways that we can help our kids feel the most seen and the most supported. You know, a lot of the time when we're listening to our kids or anyone else, there's a little, there's a little track playing in our heads, um, thinking about what we're going to say, analyzing what they're saying. It's not a bad thing. It's natural. It's how we process, right? I'm not saying don't do that. What I am saying is also make sure the part of your brain that's really listening to that person is online and that, uh, and that you're not listening with the agenda. Even though that stuff is happening, it's kind of in the background. It's not, it's not in the foreground where you're going to deciding what you're going to say next based on analysis and what you, and your agenda, right? Agenda meaning like, even if it's a good agenda, like I want to keep my kids safe. At the moment that you're listening to them, the safest thing you can do for them, the most safety you can do for them is to listen without that agenda and to really listen, listen to their heart, listen to their emotions, listen to their perspective, listen to their values, listen to their needs and feelings. Thanks to Marshall Rosenberg, we can say that so clearly, you know, and, uh, and be in a really deep, really deep open hearted space when you're listening to your kid, regardless of what it's about, even if you don't understand what they're talking about. <laughs> Be really present with them. And that presence means everything to kids. It really, really does. It's a, it has a huge impact on, uh, on how they feel about us, on how they feel about coming to us with things, you know? I saw all of, my, all of my kids' peers turning away from their parents when they really needed uh, help and support. It was usually the, the, their parents that they were needing help and support from. Um, but pretty consistently, that was the case. There were a couple of exceptions where uh, where parents had you know better relationships with their kids. Um, but whenever her friends would come over to our place, they would always be in a little bit of culture shock at first because they just weren't used to parents and kids treating each other like equals, basically, you know, like uh, like um, with no authority and no uh, hierarchy and no separation of that sort. And it's a beautiful thing. And one of the things that really leads to that is listening without an agenda. My kid knows that she can rely on us to really hear her out and hear her perspective and not try and uh, force things. It doesn't mean we don't guide. It doesn't mean we don't discuss things. It doesn't mean we don't explore things together. That's a deep part of it. But there is a specific active listening mode that's useful to develop, skill that's useful to develop, and it really makes a difference to kids. And I, 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 and I experience it, uh, have experienced it in so many different circumstances. So give that a try. See how when you next time your kid's talking, see if you can like turn on a switch of extra listening. However good you are at it already. Even me saying this, the next time I listen to my kid, I'm going to try harder. So however good you are at it already, how can you do just a little bit more? And if you're interested, please check out my, uh, my free course called Guiding Without Controlling at MeaningfulIdeas.com. Uh, it's a wonderful course full of all sorts of information about how to do this kind of work and, uh, and the why and the how. And that's it, everyone. Peace out.